Hello beautiful buds, welcome back to my channel. So today we are gonna be talking about books. When I did my best planners and journals video um, for 2019, I asked if you guys wanted to see a video of all of my favorite like inspirational slash self-help books and a lot of people said that they would be interested in that. Saying self-help books sounds so cheesy, but these inspirational books have all like really seriously changed my life in like very tangible ways where you can see the effects in like everything that I do after I read them. And there are 10 books. I love reading this kind of stuff. It's so inspiring. So this video might be a little bit long. So go ahead and sit down and grab yourself a cup of coffee or tea or hot chocolate if you're into that like I am. And we will jump right into the video. Also, thoughts on that new intro? Do you guys like it? Do you guys hate it? Are you kind of like eh on it? Let me know. Okay, so I know that I should probably like build up to like my favorite one, but I am too excited to talk about it. So I'm just gonna get it out of the way, right out of the gate. It is this beautiful book, You Are a Badass by Jen Sincero. I love how conversational this book is. I love how relatable it is. She's funny. She says things in really interesting ways that I feel like you can connect with immediately instead of being kind of like highbrow, very like psychological. It's just really real. And the thing that I like the most about this book is that it's not gentle. It <laughs> kicks your butt into gear. It identifies the excuses that you're probably making in your head as you're reading it and tells you to knock it the heck off. This is probably the book that has changed my life more than any other book that I've ever read. I feel like it helped me immensely in the time period where I was starting this channel and starting my own business and kind of doubting um, if I was good enough or if I was able to do certain things. Um, and it really just kind of helped me to harness the power of self-love, as cheesy as that sounds. If you have not read this, go read it, please. Please go read it. I don't care if you do audiobook or ebook or if you pick up the paper version. It's actually not that expensive. I'll link all these books um, on Amazon down below. Please go read this if that is the only thing that you take away from this video because it is magical and it will change your life and make you feel like you can kick ass and do anything. So predictably following up with that, <laughs> <laughs> I also have her two other books. Uh, disclaimer, I have not finished these yet because I just got them for Christmas. I am about halfway through this one and only a little bit into this one. So this one is You Are a Badass at Making Money and it's all about like your career and financial life. So it's got the same like messages of like stop making excuses and do the thing and love yourself like this one does. However, it's much more money focused. It's interesting because I get uncomfortable with the way that it talks about money a lot because it's so positive about like being rich and having money, which really isn't a bad thing. And it addresses that a lot and like why we have such weird cultural juju around money and how a lot of us stay under the income level that we would like to be at um, because we have this weird like cultural idea that like money is the root of all evil and rich people are like all filthy and terrible. Um, and that's definitely true for some people. <coughs> president but you can also just use money to like live your most fulfilled life and work with awesome charities and position yourself in a way that you can make the world a better place so it's really like messing with my mind and as somebody who owns her own business too it's really interesting to take a look at like the biases that I have around money and yeah I just feel like it's good for my financial life and kind of my mental health life too so this one, You Are a Badass Every Day, was also a Christmas gift from my friend Annalise. It is like the bite-sized version of the yellow one in that it's like a bunch of chapters that are about three, four, five pages long and you're supposed to read one every day. And so it's kind of cool to like wake up or if you just have a point in your day where you're like feeling down, you don't really want to get a lot done, pick up this, read a couple of pages and boom, instant motivation. You suddenly want to climb mountains and do all the things in the world that you never thought you could do which is great because as a person who suffers from depression, which often manifests itself in a lack of motivation, um, this is really good for kind of kickstarting me when I don't wanna leave my bed. So the next book is this one. It is called Girl Wash Your Face and it's by Rachel Hollis. This book is very similar to this one. I would say that this one's maybe a little bit more irreverent, but this has the same kind of like self-love kick butt attitude. I always felt really positive after reading a chapter of this book. I think this one is cool as well because each chapter breaks down like a different lie that we tell to ourselves and that like stops us from reaching our full potential or just makes us feel bad about ourselves. And she does it in a really relatable way that helps you to kind of like 
like not feel as bad for thinking the negative thoughts, um, but at the same time change that thought pattern. My friend Rachel, who is a vlogger here in Seattle, um, this is like her, this book for me. Um, she said it just absolutely changed her life. It communicated like directly to her, like told her exactly what she needed to hear. Um, so I highly recommend this one as well. So on the flip side of those two authors that are very like conversational and kind of just feel like you're sitting down to lunch with a friend, um, you've probably heard of this book and you've probably definitely heard of Brene Brown. She is a shame researcher. So she researches like why we feel shame and how to deal with shame, um, which sounds like a negative thing, but actually it's really positive. <laughs> this one is called The Gifts of Imperfection and it was recommended to me by my friend Diva. The little tagline on it is, let go of who you think you're supposed to be and embrace who you are, your guide to a wholehearted life. And that really is what this book is. This book takes um, a much more clinical approach. So she has a lot of research that she infuses into this. She's also a professional speaker. So she talks a lot about her professional experience. This is definitely a little bit of a deeper read, but it's also got some really, really important chunks in it. It talks about why we think we're not enough, why we feel like we might not belong, and what's holding us back from exploring our unique gifts. And another thing that I really like about this one is at the end of all the chapters, there are like this little section that has three paragraphs. It's called Dig, D-I-G, Deep, so it's get deliberate, get inspired, and get going. Um, and so there's kind of like these actionable tips at the very end of each chapter that summarizes and tells you like how to apply that practically in your life. And also while this book is like a little bit more academic, it's very short. It's like less than 150 pages. So not like a super long read. If you are in your 20s like I am, I also highly recommend The Defining Decade. Um, this is by Meg Jay. And I think this was like the first like self-help inspirational book that I read like in my adult life that kind of kickstarted this whole thing. This book is all about why your 20s are important and how you can make the most of them. And it really covers a really wide variety of topics from mental health to family life to career stuff. And it also contains a lot of like personal stories from people that she has heard heard from, worked with, interviewed, etc. And I can guarantee you that if you read this, you're going to like resonate with at least one of the stories and be like, oh my gosh, wait, was that me that she took that story from? Because that's something that I do. That's something that I think or feel. And then she like goes into depth about like how you can change. One of the biggest things that I learned from this book was the like myth of the urban tribe, which is like when you watch like Friends or How I Met Your Mother or like any of those sitcoms, how there's that like group of like five or six adult friends and like all they do is hang out with each other. And they don't really have a whole lot else going on outside of that, like except for like short lived significant others. And they're like living in the city and they're all broke, but they're not really broke. In true Megan Acuna fashion, my camera has died, but not to fear, I'm back. Anyways, this book talks about how that kind of urban tribe is a myth. And we all spend all of this time feeling lonely because we don't have like that group of friends that just like means everything to each other and they do everything together and they have all these like wacky adventures um, and how that's not actually like what friendship looks like in a practical way. Um, and so I thought that was really cool um, because I definitely fall victim to that. And just because you don't have a friend group that looks a certain way, doesn't mean that you don't have friends and relationships that matter. So this one is like half-heartedly put on this list. It is Girl Boss by Sophia Amoruso. I'm putting it on the list because I love that she coined the term Girl Boss and I think you can learn a lot about building a business from this book. However, it is a little bit like self-congratulatory at times and I found myself being turned off by some of her stories because she's very like just pull yourself up by your bootstraps no matter what. And like, I was poor once and I did this wonderful, great thing and let me talk about it for 40 pages. And she doesn't really acknowledge some of the advantages she had culturally, socioeconomically, racially that may have got her to that point. However, I still think that it's worth a read, especially for female entrepreneurs um, because she's very like female entrepreneur friendly and it's got a lot of career tips, so that's cool. This next one isn't necessarily like a self-help book per se, um, but it does really affect your mental landscape. So I'm including it anyway, and that is The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up by Marie Kondo. Um, a lot of you have probably read this already because it was super popular a couple of years ago. Um, but basically, if you haven't, Marie Kondo is a Japanese cleaning consultant is like what it says on the back of the book. Um, but basically, her whole philosophy is like to declutter based on whether or not objects bring you joy um, and or if they have like a practical purpose. She does also have a special 
on Netflix now that I have yet to watch. But this was really helpful for me, especially because she went into detail about what to do when you get gifts that like you don't love, but you feel guilty about giving them away. And she basically says that the item fulfills its purpose when it is given to you because it gives you joy to receive that and to know that somebody else thought of you and picked something out for you. And then because its purpose has been fulfilled, you can let go of that without feeling guilty. And she's full of lots of cool tips for decluttering and like decluttering sentimental items and like digitizing. And then there's also some practical stuff in here about like how to fold and how to clean um, and how to make it stick if you're like a chronically messy person, how to not keep decluttering and then everything gets out of control again. And then you declutter and then everything gets out of control again. I also like this because it's not necessarily minimalist. She basically says that if you have these items that are bringing you joy and or fulfilling a practical purpose even if you have a lot of them if they all fit all the characteristics that she lays out for like a meaningful item then they are serving a purpose and you can keep them and it's not necessarily like you have to not have any stuff this book is translated from Japanese which gives it kind of a formal feel and it also can tend to be a little bit repetitive at times but it's also only like 200 pages so you can kind of zoom through it in a couple of sittings. I feel like this one would be a great one to listen to on an audiobook like as you're cleaning because it helps to motivate you to like keep going and not give up. All right, so my edition of this is really old. It is What Color Is Your Parachute 2017. And this guy, Richard N. Bowles, puts out a new version of this book every single year. So there should be a 2019 version out now. This was actually recommended to me by one of my college professors um, when I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do after graduation. Um, I was going into a corporate job that was like customer service oriented and he was like, hey, look, like you're too smart for that. You can do better. I think you should read this book. and it not only is great for job hunting and gives you a lot of tips for like applying and following up and all of that, but it helps you figure out what you actually want to do with your life. I definitely need to give this a revisit since I've kind of pivoted um, my vision for what my future looks like, but there are like all kinds of like quizzes and stuff in here and it helps you like take self inventory. Um, so if you are not quite sure where you're at in life um, or if you're job hunting or both, Go read this book. Look at this, this is so good. And the last book that I have to recommend you guys is Do the Work. This is by Stephen Pressfield. This is a super short read. It will kick you in the butt if you are a creative or somebody who has any kind of big project or business idea that you are excited about and always talking about, but you never really seem to like start or get it off the ground or you're dragging your feet. This is only 98 pages long, but it is some of the most inspiring 98 pages that you will ever read. Seriously, this is such an easy read. Like look at how big the typography is on some of these pages. The basic premise of this book is to stop making excuses and just do the work. Do the thing. The back actually puts it like really well. So I'll just kind of quote off of here. It says, um, do the work takes the reader from start to finish of any long form project, novel, screenplay, album, software piece, you name it. Do the work identifies the predictable resistance points along the way and walks you through each of them. No, you are not crazy. No, you are not alone. No, you are not the first person to hit the wall. I love this because just like Girl Wash Your Face, it identifies a lot of the lies that we tell ourselves that hold ourselves back. He calls them the resistances in this book. And it just leaves you feeling really empowered and ready to stop procrastinating and get down to work, which like who doesn't need that? All right, guys, so that is it of my list of my 10 favorite self-help slash inspirational books. I'll link them all down below if you guys are interested in reading any of them. I highly recommend it. Um, please DM me on Instagram if you have decided to read any of these. Um, we could maybe even start like kind of a virtual book club um, because I'm so passionate about this stuff and I always need like more connection and more motivation. And I wanna be that source for you guys too. As usual, I hope you guys are having an amazing day wherever you are, and I will see you all in my next video. Bye!